Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A pleasure to have the pair of you here in beautiful, beautiful Marrakesh. Maybe we can begin with a brief introduction to Eureka. Uh, tell us a bit about the story and what people can expect from the film. What people can expect about the film, I really don't have a clear idea about that. But uh, it's an invitation about to, to, to feel different places and situations and communities inside America, especially about natives. How I see some somehow some way the difference between North American natives and South American natives, and it's got a very kind of unique uh, look and feel and tone and this sort of uh, idea of sort of having three different sections to it, three different acts. Um, can you tell us a bit about what inspired you to make the film and particularly why it took the form that it did? Yeah, we, we just did a, a previous film before this one called Haucha. So I keep thinking about the idea about keep uh, shooting some sequences with natives. And then I start to thinking about who represent them in films. And I, I just go immediately to Western films. And then I start thinking uh, if Western films back in time somehow represent them in the way they want to. Mm -hmm. And then I was uh, just by chance I was doing a fellowship in, in, in between Boston and New York for a year or so, so and I asked Vigo if he knows some people in any reservation and he immediately says yes of course I know and he gave me some names and I take a couple of planes and I rent a car and I just move to Pine Ridge and knock some doors and I start watching how they live and immediately get it impressed by and I start thinking about to 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 make this film in the, in that particular place in US and Vigo, maybe you can say a bit about your collaboration with Alessandro. Um, um, what was appealing to you about this particular project and working with him? Well, I enjoyed, you know, we had met years before we did Cauca, and we have some friends in common, especially uh, Fabian Casas, who's a poet, and he had not written screenplays before, but he wrote the screenplay for Cauca, and so we all connected and had a great time telling that story. Uh, it was a really good relationship with Lisandro sometimes. Well, you hope that always with directors you're going to have a understanding where you don't have to talk a lot, where you kind of, oh, yeah, I know what you want. You're, as an actor, you're always trying to help the director get their vision on the screen. And I kind of instinctively understood what he wanted, I think. We, we didn't have to talk a lot about it. Um, I understood visually, you know, as a photographer, what he was trying to do. And I liked it, and I liked his approach to the storytelling, and it was a great experience. So then when he said, Fabian and I have come up with another story that I want to tell, it's more complex in a way. I mean, Jauja was shot on in Argentina, in Patagonia, and a little bit in Denmark, but, but this one was much more complicated. You know, he shot in in the U.S., but he also shot in Spain, and he shot in... In, uh, in Mexico, in the jungle, very difficult locations. I mean, all his films, I think landscape is, is the most important thing, right? And, and he goes to really difficult places to film. Um, but the rewards are great when you see visually what he does. And um, this story sounded, sounded really good. It wasn't to be in the whole movie like with Cauca. It was just the prologue part. And I thought it was uh, a good challenge, and I, I welcomed the, the opportunity. We had a good time, and then I wished him luck because I knew the other parts of the filming were going to be really hard, and they were. And not only were they hard already, just because of where he was going, but you had COVID. He had so many problems. It took him years to make this, but he's very... You are quietly stubborn, yeah. and you never you never give up, which is Sorry a, about that. and that's a great. You have to be. You have to be. It's great. And and talking about you know um, perhaps some of the difficulties. What were the main challenges and some of the highlights? And maybe you can say for your section, uh, or maybe you had the easy bit and it, and it all was uh, more challenging after. I think I had not the easy. I mean, it was very hot when we were filming. It was quite warm, but uh, no, we had fun. I think probably that was the most relaxing one for you, right? Yeah, it was kind of Disneyland on, the, on in this shooting, you know. Be no, because we were shooting in a Sergio Leone set where they used to 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 shoot like spaghetti westerns in Spain in Almeria, and everything was more or less under control, you know. 
with yeah. the, with the, with the, with actors like him and Chiara and uh, and the crew and uh, in, in, people speaking in Spanish and and everything was kind of uh, efficient. Efficient somehow. It was about six days shooting and it was fun, really fun. Because we, I mean, our structure is more like friends and family, and uh, we, we have a, a lot of uh, good moments during the shooting. So, and I mean, just because we 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 know how to work together, is, it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm I have to be in charge. So Bigo can be in charge, or DOP can be in charge about the the next scene or the next take, or how how to frame this. So I feel really really supported by them. But then when we move to, especially with, uh, for example, Mexico or, or U.S., Mexico, we have to cross seven rivers in order to get the location. It was kind of hard. And, and, and you know, I, I didn't know that much the crew at that time. So you, you got to, I have to, the, the way we work is I have to get involved with the crew, but some, sometimes crew doesn't want to get involved with me because, they, <laughs> they, you know, they don't even... Then you yeah. had bad weather in the U.S. too. It was like really cold, right? No, well, the U.S. was kind of, uh, I mean, I'm a South American <laughs> man, and I was, we were shooting like 30 degrees below and uh, 14 hours outside at night and just, yeah. So just to get out from our place where we were staying inside the, the reservation was uh, a challenge. So, and plus we have difficulties with, because we shoot there with, uh, Chiara Maserena was there for a small kind of sequences, but then we shoot with non-professional actors who were playing their own character i mean i mean i'm talking now about the police officer alaina but it was difficult because they they have people who i i really want to work with have film is not their priority they have to do so much many difficulties every day to affront so for them we were just back in the line i don't know if i'm clear about that you know we, we were not the, the main priority for them you know right it was just some guys making a movie. Exactly. That was a pain in the ass. <laughs> no. yeah. What are you doing here? You know, what? <laughs> I'm just trying to portrait you, you know, but... Uh... And what do you hope the impact of this film being? I know it's already played in Cannes, different audience completely here in Marrakesh. But, you know, there's this idea of how we perceive, like, indigenous populations, ideas of the American dream. I mean, you know, what do you hope people take away from your film? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think they are part of the American dream. But uh, in terms of uh, the audience, about the, I just been traveling with the film. I mean, in, to different countries and places. I mean, it's a complex film, so it's like a watching. Or at least I want that people see this film as a painting, where you can see different elements and colors and you know figures. And I ask them to make their own connections. And if I'm lucky, after watching the films, they will get into the internet and see what is happening in those places. Lisandro's films always find an audience, but you hope that people who aren't used to seeing that kind of approach to making movies and photography and subjects and landscapes, you hope that people that aren't used to seeing them, you know, it's not uh, that they see the movie, that they appreciate it. And I think I, I could see that yesterday when we showed it here, there were some people that seemed, you know, really intrigued by it and and surprised by the way you treated the places and the people they seem curious about it so i think there were some people last night for example yeah. that had their eyes opened a little bit not just about the subject mm -hmm. about the people but also the way that you yeah. you frame the way that you film you know so and the use of sound and everything yeah yeah, yeah. i think it's um, so it's it's a kind of film that I, I I like to to present to the audiences because it's the film that I feel we all need to talk about the film itself and plus any other things and that's what I ask to a film be you know like uh, not not just I like it I don't like it next thing so I, I think films for me are, are a good excuse to meet people and talk about different issues. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Really enjoy the time in Marrakesh. Thanks. Thank you.